Hey guys, it's Kendra. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a much overdue video and it's going to be all about gluten. So as many of you guys know, I have eaten gluten-free for a long time now. It's been almost 10 years and I did a video like back when I first started YouTube on it and I don't even know if I've done one since, maybe one, but it still is a long time ago. So in today's video, I want to talk about why I went gluten-free, the signs that I started to notice, what caused me to start figuring out, okay, what's going on here? Just kind of like the history of it, what led me to that. And then also tips on going gluten-free, things to help make it easier if you're kind of overwhelmed with the process. And also just, I wanna talk about food in general and just eating and diet and having a healthy relationship with food and kind of like all along the lines of health. I also asked you guys on Instagram, any questions you have related to this topic and I have a ton. So first I wanna talk about the difference between celiac disease and having a gluten intolerance because there is a difference uh, and I don't want you guys to confuse the two. I did get tested, I'll go into that in a sec, but I was tested for celiac back in college and I didn't have it then. I have just a sensitivity to gluten and I do think a lot of people have this. I don't think it's just like a rare thing. And the reason is because gluten is just hard to digest. It's very hard on your stomach. I think some people more than others, it's harder for them to break down gluten and that's just personally how I am. I also think there's a genetic component to it because my mom is very sensitive to gluten and so am I and so is one of my brothers. So it's like a lot goes into it. One other thing is it's not something that you're technically born with. Like gluten intolerance can develop over time and I developed it in college. I was a senior in college when I first started noticing it. So don't think like it coming on all of a sudden is like, well, what does this mean? That can't be it. Some food allergies can just happen all of a sudden later in life. So if all of a sudden things just don't feel right, that totally could be what's happening. So celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder and it, your body responds negatively to gluten, which is a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. And I also did the um, Everly Well sensitivity test. So it tests all the food, food groups, not food groups, um, just like different ingredients and whatnot. And it shows what you have a mild reaction to and all of that. So I didn't get a high reaction to anything. It was just a mild reaction, but to all of those things, to wheat, barley, rye, and just some other things, gluten. And then for celiac disease, it says over time, as gluten triggers immune responses, the small intestine lining becomes damaged, and then without treatment, they can suffer from malabsorption. And then it's basically the inability for the small intestine to absorb nutrients into the bloodstream. I feel like the symptoms for celiac disease are just much more intense. A lot of the time I've heard that people with celiac have to go to the hospital after they eat it, um, so a couple of symptoms are diarrhea, weight loss, bloating and gas, abdominal pains, constipation, and vomiting. Okay, so then gluten intolerance. So they both have negative responses to gluten, um, but gluten intolerance is like a short-term side effect, whereas celiac is more long-term. Um, a person with celiac, when they ingest gluten, his or her immune system will attack against its own body tissue, whereas if you are gluten intolerant, the consumption of gluten will cause short-term bloating and belly pain. Um, again, gluten intolerance doesn't usually cause long-term harm to the body. I do think it just is not good for my intestinal lining. Um, my main thing with food in general is to listen to your body. After, I just think a lot of people don't associate food with the cause for a lot of things. And to me, diet is everything. Like what you put in your body is going to affect you, affect everything. So back in college, I I started noticing like after I would be eating a meal, I would get really bad stomach pains. And I always just thought I was eating too much or I was just full after a heavy meal. I remember eating a big bowl of spaghetti and I just felt like sick and I was like, oh my gosh, like, are you guys so full? I would just think that's just normal. People just get really full after they eat or something. Um, 
So that went on for some time. And then I remember one day specifically, I got the worst stomach ache I've ever had. And I was laying on my bed, just couldn't move. Like the, when you lay in your stomach, it's the best way to relieve that pain. And I was like, I need to figure out what's going on, going on because this can't continue. So I wrote down everything that I ate. And I remember calling my mom and I was like, what do you think this is? And it was funny because my mom had been, she'd been dealing with stomach issues for years and years. She would go to the doctor all the time. They would give her medicine. They would do all this stuff and nothing helped. Um, and then she, I think one of her friends or family members told her to go off gluten for a few weeks and that miraculously cured everything for her. So she was like, okay, go off gluten. I'll give you tips. I'll show you how to do it. It's not that bad. And so that's what I did. And she was like, just see what you ate all day. So I wrote down everything and I had two bars. All I had the whole day were two bars. And I was in college at the time. So I was just like eating quickly, eating like ready to go things, you know, packaged things. And the last thing I had eaten was a Lara bar. Wait, not a Lara bar, a Luna bar. And the first ingredients on that were like barley or something, rye, like all of those things. And I remember being like, okay, well, this must be the reason. So I ended up going to a health food store like that day and I spent so much money because at the time, like gluten-free stuff wasn't really, a, like it's a fad now, which is kind of, I don't like that it's a fad. You know, I think people just do it because they feel like it's healthy. Um, we'll talk about that too. If you are deciding to do this now, if you are like having really bad stomach aches after you eat certain things, write it down. First of all, it's my like biggest tip to everybody is just write down what you're eating and see like a common thread. So go through things like it might not be gluten for you. It might be dairy or it might be sugar. So just circle what you see is common and what you can start eliminating. Give yourself two weeks to a month to take that out of your diet. Don't like eliminate everything because then you're not going to know what it is. So start with gluten. See if that does anything. Start with dairy. Sugar, I think is another big culprit. But sugar, you'll get different symptoms for having too much sugar. Like that'd be more headaches and being really tired, lethargic. Um, whereas gluten is definitely, you feel it in your gut. And it's not like a, I'm gonna try to explain the pain. It's not like you have cramps. It's not like you're you're sick to your stomach. It It's wide, it goes out. It's like this whole area right here, like it's higher. And it feels like sharp shooting pains. So it's not like a, oh, I just feel sick. It's like a, ow, this hurts really, really bad. And you can't really like do anything. It just like cripples you and you just wanna lay down. And the pain also like, it doesn't happen to me very often now. It's only when I kind of like get off the rails and eat a few things that I shouldn't be eating. And then all of a sudden it builds up in your body and you're gonna have this bad reaction to it again. Um, but when I do like get that bad stomach ache again, it's gonna, it doesn't go away for like a whole day. So just FYI, it's not gonna like, you're not gonna snap your fingers and an hour later it's gonna be gone. I usually have to sleep the whole night and then usually it's gone by the morning. But it's like a bad, bad, bad stomach ache. And it's just like this whole area just like really, really hurts really bad. One thing that does help it is a heating pad though, but usually it's just time that gets it away. Like nothing in particular is gonna help. Eating makes it worse. So if I ever get like a fat stomach ache, I do not eat because the eating is just gonna make it worse. So I started cutting it out and after I would say a few weeks to a month, I started feeling so much better. And it wasn't just that I had, you know, the stomach aches were gone, but I felt like my mental clarity was so much better. It was almost like you're in a fog and it like lifts and you just feel like you have more energy, you're in a better mood. I was also getting headaches um, that I wasn't like, I wasn't thinking that was because of what I was eating. You know, I just thought it was other things, but I just felt like all of a sudden I felt so much better and clearer. So from then on, I was like, okay, well clearly this is what's going on. So I'm just not gonna eat gluten anymore. And what I would say is if you want to cut gluten out and you know see if this is gonna help you, instead of trying to look for foods that are like labeled gluten-free, 
just think about foods that are naturally gluten-free because what happens is a lot of foods that are made to be gluten-free, they add a lot of other things to that. So they'll add sugars and they'll add other things to make, it's like a higher calorie product. So it's not necessarily like it's better for you. It's kind of filled with other things that just aren't gluten. So personally, I just try to eat things that just generally don't have gluten in them. Okay, so let's talk about you know, if you are deciding to go gluten-free, how to go about it, because I think it can be overwhelming because you think gluten, you think bread. That's what I think is the number one thing. And typically, you know, if you look at people's diet, you know, in the morning people have toast, they have cereal, in the afternoon they'll have a sandwich, at night they'll have maybe, I don't know, something with bread, pasta, okay? That's all gluten, you can't eat any of that. And to a lot of people that's like, well, what am I gonna eat? I now associate eating those things with that bad, awful stomach ache. So if you know that when you eat something, you're gonna feel this way, you're not gonna wanna eat it, you know? So it's just, for me, it's like a mental thing. I, I don't even crave eating cookies because I know it's gonna make me feel like crap afterwards, you know? So bread, you wanna eliminate. Um, pasta, you wanna eliminate. What else has gluten in it? Pretty much anything that's baked, like muffins, croissants, scones, anything that is that rises, gluten is what makes things light and fluffy. So if you think about donuts, let's compare like a cake donut to a light and fluffy yeast donut, the yeast donut is gonna have a lot more gluten in that. So if I really want a bite of something, I would take a bite of the cake donut rather than the other one because I know it's gonna have less gluten in it. So just kind of knowing what to avoid, I feel like is the first step. And also you can see like what your body is responding to. So for me, when I'm going to a restaurant, say I'm going there for lunch, there's, you know, appetizers, sandwiches, pizzas, burgers, salads. I always look at the appetizers and then the salads and then if they have like a gluten-free pizza, but, or tacos, that's what I usually get when I'm eating out because you're gonna wanna avoid the sandwich section because you can't have sandwiches. So as I am editing this video, I thought it'd be helpful to do a blog post sharing foods that you can eat. So if you're grocery shopping and you need ideas, if you're out at a restaurant and you don't know what to order, I'm going to make a list of everything on my blog right now after I get this video up for you. So go to withkendra.com if you guys wanna see that and that'll be there for you. Like I said earlier, I was tested for celiac back in college. But at the time I had cut gluten out of my diet. I don't know if there needs to be gluten in your system to detect it. So if you do know that, let me know. I could probably look it up. But I remember after I was tested, I think it's a blood test and it came back negative. I was wondering like, I wonder if it's because I didn't have any gluten in my system. And if I took it after like eating certain things, if it would change the results. Um, I also ended up going to the doctor and doing like an allergy test, a food test where they prick your arm to like test all your allergies. And all I got back was I was allergic to grass. <laughs> so that's why I did the Everly Well test and it did show that I have a mild sensitivity to certain things. But for me, it's like, I know that my body reacts this way to certain foods. So it's just common sense now to just avoid them. Okay, I'm gonna go through some of these questions. So somebody said, how can you narrow it down and know for certain, bloating, etc.? I'm not really sure if I am. So again, um, for me, it was like that really bad stomach ache. And yeah, you do feel bloated too, but I think bloating a lot of the time is caused by dairy. So I would do a food elimination process. So pick one thing, pick dairy or pick gluten, whatever you eat more of maybe. Take two weeks out of your life, take it out of your diet and see how you feel. If you feel the same, if you still feel bad, then that's probably not the thing giving you those issues and try something else. Somebody said, how soon did you see changes? And you'll see changes very quick. I think anything with diet, takes a couple weeks and you're gonna start noticing right away. Somebody asked, what advice do you have for people with more of an addictive personality with food? Have you always been pretty good about clean eating, making diet changes? So I also get questions kind of like, I don't wanna give up gluten, this seems too hard. For me, again, I associate with eating those things with like, I'm gonna feel really crappy afterwards, so I don't wanna feel that way. But also, I don't have an emotional relationship with food, I think, Andrew does. Okay, there's a lot of people like him who associate reward with food. If they have a bad day, they want to come home and eat something. 
if something really great happens, they want to celebrate with food. And that's how a lot of people are. The dangerous thing about that though, is you tie emotion with food and you have no like practical way of thinking about it. It's like your emotions take over and that can lead to like binging and doing all these things or like just, you know, making excuses. Like I'm just, gonna, I'm eating this because of X, Y, Z, you know, where food is food and you're taking it in and it's going to affect your body no matter what food and your body doesn't have, <clears throat> they don't care if you are celebrating about something, you know what I mean? So for me, I just associate food with it is something that I'm taking in that's helping my body be the best that it can. If I'm eating really bad food, I'm going to feel bad physically and emotionally. Sugar especially is a really dangerous thing because sugar is addicting. And so once you start eating sugar a lot, you're going to just keep craving it. So sugar, dairy, and gluten, I feel like are the three things that are kind of the problem areas but like little things that I do I don't ever feel like I have to finish anything I'll save it for later I just eat till I'm satisfied I don't eat till I'm full I also just eat when I'm hungry so if it's lunchtime and I'm not hungry I'm not going to have a big meal you know I'll wait until I am hungry yeah food is definitely a mental thing for a lot of people so you have to take that emotion out of food or else it's going to be super super hard okay some questions about um, our kids and why they don't eat gluten-free and if we are. So for them, I'm not going to make them like on a gluten-free diet. It's more to me, it's something that you can, that can happen later on. But I do think gluten is hard for most people to digest. So I just don't give them a ton of it, but I don't really buy much gluten anyways, because I kind of just, you know, shop how I am used to shopping for myself. So I'll buy crackers for them that aren't gluten-free. But whenever I am buying bread, it's like a bread that I can eat. So a lot of the stuff that I am feeding them is pretty much gluten-free, just like normally. But the nice thing is now there's so much out there that is gluten-free, that's so good. Like there are so many great pastas that are gluten-free that aren't just like rice pasta or corn pasta, they're lentil pasta and they have, you know, black bean pasta, or red lentil pasta that are actually really good for you rather than just being like filling it with rice and corn, you know? Um, also crackers, they have so many good gluten-free crackers now. So if you are like a little bit nervous about having to cut gluten out, just know there's so much out there. I typically shop at Trader Joe's and they have a lot of stuff, um, but like places like Ralph's has even more, like they have so much stuff there. Somebody asked if dairy affects me. Dairy doesn't really affect me actually. Um, I don't know, I could cut it out and see because again, if I ever feel like bloated after certain things, I just look at what I'm eating and I'm like, okay, what did I eat a lot today that affected my stomach? I also notice the difference when I'm not taking my probiotics. I think that really helps me kind of be regular and flush everything out. So if you're not taking a probiotic, I would definitely suggest doing that. Okay, somebody asked if you find Trader Joe's to be the most reasonably, reasonably priced for gluten-free. Okay, just in general, gluten or Trader Joe's is so much more affordable than most grocery stores. When I go to Trader Joe's, I spend half as much than a, like a typical grocery store like Albertsons. It, like, no matter what, every time. And I think it's just because they have less options and I know what I'm shopping for. So when I'm there, I know what to get. Whereas when I go to Ralph's, I like have a party and get so many things because I'm so excited. There's so many different things to try, you know? So I think it's just one, the options. And two, I do think the prices are lower at Trader Joe's. Okay, somebody asked how difficult it is going gluten-free and was it cold turkey or was it a gradual change? I did it cold turkey actually. And then I was just kind of a learning process of figuring out like, okay, what actually has gluten in it? Because there's a lot of stuff that's sneaky in the ingredients that you wouldn't necessarily know is gluten. So just look it up and just say, you know, gluten-free, like what is, what is gluten? Because it, I just had to kind of like learn about it a little bit. But as far as how difficult it is, I think it was hard in the beginning because I felt like I was missing out on so much. But now, like honestly, so many restaurants, there's so many gluten-free options now, so I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. It's totally a mental thing. Like you have to just tell yourself that you're gonna feel better when you eat gluten-free and it's just completely worth it to me. 
Andrew, still to this day, okay, it's like insane to me. We'll be at a restaurant and he's like, do you wanna share the sandwich with me? And I'm like, when will you remember that I don't eat gluten? Like, honestly, I, I can't. So it's almost harder with other people because they don't understand like what has gluten in it. Um, so you just have to know options and you need to know like what you can replace things with or what you can't eat. Like if you're at a party, know what you can eat, what you can't eat. It's, I mean, just the easy thing is just knowing if it has bread in it or if it's breaded, you probably should avoid it. Oh, this is interesting. Somebody said they had bumps on their arms and they heard it could be gluten. I used to have that now that I think about it because I don't think I have that anymore. I used to get all these bumps right here and on the back of my legs and that totally could be it. So yes, definitely try it. Cut it out for two weeks and see if it helps. Okay, also I wanted to add this in because I was driving today and I realized I forgot to talk about this, but also pay attention to your body products because um, back when I first was figuring out to go gluten-free, my legs would itch. So make sure your body products are gluten-free as well. That's kind of another reason why I was encouraged to clean out my beauty products because um, it just showed me that we we're you know absorbing all of that so much and it totally affects you. Oh, one other thing is it can affect your skin. So if you notice your skin is breaking out, same with dairy, if you're like, what's going on with my skin? The first thing I always tell people is cut stuff out like do an elimination to your diet and see if your skin clears up because i'm sure it will okay another good question has it aided in helping you maintain a healthy weight if you think about just like a gluten-free diet um you know it's i feel like it's just a little bit lighter so for me i had gluten-free oatmeal this morning for breakfast i just get gluten-free rolled oats watch out for granola bars because those are sneaky and you have to really look at the ingredients because there's certain things that can affect me. Like anything enriched always affects me. Um, there's something else. It's a certain ingredient. Oh my gosh, what is it? And it killed my stomach. And I was like, what is this? Oh, it's something fiber. Fiber, enriched fiber or something like that. So now I always try to avoid that. But typically in the morning, I do best with something lighter. So um, something that's not as processed too. Processed stuff makes me feel really yuck. So a smoothie, I feel better. A yogurt, I feel better with that with like a little gluten-free granola on top. I do have my coffee in the morning with a little bit of milk. I don't have a ton in the morning for breakfast. So I'm usually not that hungry for breakfast and I eat a lot of eggs, eggs with some cheese on top. And then for lunch, I usually have a salad with a ton of different things on it, nuts, veggies, and chicken. I have soup. Um, for dinner, I do like a chicken with either rice or potatoes and veggies usually, like potatoes are, are gluten-free, so that's something you can eat, like sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, roasted potatoes, like you can get creative with what you're eating. Um, stir fry, like Asian stuff. I avoid soy sauce. That's something that you wouldn't necessarily think has gluten in it, but yeah, soy sauce is like definitely a no-no. If I ever have soy sauce, it always hurts really bad. Okay, yeah, somebody said, can you explain that going gluten-free is for your health and not a fad diet? And a lot of people I think just think, oh, it's healthy, it's gluten-free. But like I was saying earlier, products that are just made to be gluten-free sometimes get just pump their products with other ingredients just so they are gluten-free and so people buy them, you know? So make sure when you're buying something that is gluten-free, it's actually a healthy product and it has good ingredients. I am all about don't look at the front of the box. Turn the box around and look at the actual ingredient list. Brands can put whatever they want pretty much on the front of a package. You need to turn it around and see what is actually in there because that's what you're eating. Um, it can say gluten-free, but it can be like not good for you. Like not everything that is gluten-free is good for you. Okay, somebody asked about the Ezekiel bread that I mentioned. So I get the Ezekiel bread sprouted grain bread. So sprouted grain bread is easier to digest and it's not considered gluten-free, but it's just easier on your stomach. So that my mom told me because she is like the ultimate food diet person. She knows so much. It, next time she's here, it would be kind of fun to have my mom in a video. She has so much info on health. It's like insane. She is she could have her own channel. Okay, but I did wanna go back to the weight loss thing because when I first went gluten-free, I actually ended up losing a ton of weight and I wasn't trying to lose weight, but it was because I didn't know what to eat. And I'll never forget, Andrew came up to visit me in college and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you're really skinny. 
and he was like so concerned for me. He took me to Costco and he bought me um, those shakes, like Ensure shakes. He's like, we need to get you food. And so he like went grocery shopping with me and like made sure I had meals, like everything going because I was a little overwhelmed and I just felt like I couldn't eat anything. So it took me some time to figure out like what is normal to eat. But yeah, it, it, I definitely did lose weight unintentionally. Like I wasn't trying to lose weight. I just, I truly didn't know what to eat. Currently, I do think it just helps me keep a healthy weight because I, I don't really crave like heavy, dense foods anymore. And I also think that does play into just not overeating because say I do want something that maybe has gluten in it, I'm not 100% sure, and I want like a few bites, I'm not gonna eat a huge portion of it because I, again, want to make sure that I feel okay after. Some other foods that I eat, I love hummus. Hummus is great. I do, I'll do gluten-free crackers with that or cut up red peppers with hummus, um, snap peas, those little pea crisp things, cheese, like string cheese. I love fruit and granola that's gluten-free, obviously. I do a lot of smoothies. I'll add some gluten-free oats to thicken it up, but I usually in my smoothies do yogurt, fruit, um, kale. I actually am sensitive to almonds now that I think about it. I When I did the Everly Well test, I did get a little bit of sensitivity to almonds, which is kind of interesting because I used to eat a lot of nuts and it would hurt my stomach. Like I get those little trail mix packs and I stopped doing that because I think, again, it was just too hard on my stomach. So I don't eat a ton of nuts anymore. I'll do a little bit of like candied walnuts or pecans or pine nuts on my salads, but I try to avoid doing like a ton of trail mix. I don't usually snack a ton anymore. I used to snack a lot, but now I usually just kind of eat my meals. So I'll do my breakfast, I'll have lunch, I'll wait until I'm hungry, have lunch. And then I usually just have dinner. Um, I used to be a big snacker and I don't know if it's just since becoming a mom. So I feel like busier and I have more to do. So I just kind of wait to eat just at one time rather than just snacking throughout the day. So I hope this helped you guys out. If you have any other questions, just leave them down below. And if you are like me and you're sensitive to gluten, you don't have a good reaction to it, let us know in the comments some things that helped you how you noticed it. Let's just make the comment section kind of like a, a way for people to go and kind of get more personal experiences. I think that'd be super helpful. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching this video and spending a little bit of time with me today. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye.